The Lifestylist, episode 105, featuring Nadine Artemis. I'm Luke Story, a former celebrity fashion stylist and founder of School of Style. For the past 20 years, I've been relentlessly dedicated to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of health and spirituality. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. You are listening to part one of two with Nadine Artemis. Make sure to tune in this Friday to catch part two. I'd like to take a moment to again thank today's sponsor, Four Sigmatic, and remind you to go to foursigmatic.com and enter the code The Lifestylist to save 15% off the world's most chronic herbal and medicinal mushroom elixir blends. I would again check out the Rishi, Chaga, Lion's Mane, Cordyceps. These are really convenient, super potent standalone drinks that are really easy to make or great add-ons to your bulletproof coffee or other drinks that you might be making at home. And it's just infinitely easier than having to empty hundreds, if not thousands of herbal capsules into your drinks like I did for about 15 years before these guys came along. So really convenient, super tasty, very potent mushroom, herbal, and superfood elixirs from foursigmatic.com. And don't forget to enter the code THE LIFESTYLIST at checkout to save that sweet 15% off. It's time for a shout out to my friends over at Organifi.com. Everyone knows that green juice is good for you now, right? You see it like in 7-Eleven. There's green juice everywhere. I love my green juice, but there's a couple problems with it. One, it usually comes in plastic, which is less than ideal. Two, it's loaded with sugar. A lot of these green juices that you think are healthy have like 25 grams of sugar. That's like a green Coca-Cola. Not good. But mainly the issue with the green juice phenomenon, for me personally, is that they're not very portable. Even if it comes in glass and it doesn't have sugar, I have to drink the whole thing at once if I'm in my car or I'm traveling or something like that. So they're just not quite convenient all of the time. And they'll just go bad if you leave them sitting there. So what Organifi has done is created this amazing superfood green juice blend that comes in a powdered form in a little packet that you can just throw in a bottle of water, any other drink, and make an instant super powerful green juice. So it's got 11 superfoods. It doesn't have any of the swag extra stuff that you don't need. It's just the stuff that you're actually going to feel. So it's got turmeric, chlorella, wheatgrass, spirulina, mint, moringa, ashwagandha, lemon, beets, little matcha green tea for an extra kick there, some coconut water for electrolytes and potassium. And then it's sweetened with monk fruit, which is awesome because it doesn't spike your blood sugar. It's got like a low glycemic index, unlike some of those green juices I mentioned. So it's a really great product. I've been using it for months. You probably heard me talk about it before. I want to share an opportunity with you to save 20% if you want to check it out. All you have to do is go to Organifi.com and enter the code LIFESTYLIST at checkout and you're going to save 20%. So that's Organifi.com with an I, not a Y. Use the code LIFESTYLIST and save 20%. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. You are listening to perhaps the luckiest man in the entire known universe. You know why? Because this is what I get to do for a living. My name is Luke Story, and today I'm here to deliver unto you one of my favorite experts in the field of natural beauty, Nadine Artemis. Nadine's the creator of Living Libations, an exquisite line of serums, elixirs, and essential oils for those seeking the purest in botanical health and beauty products on the market today. And I'm going to tell you, that is a true statement. I've been using her products for, God, going back probably 10 years. If you went into my medicine cabinet right now, you'd find, let me see, I'm guessing five, maybe between five and eight different products. And, uh, you know, that's why I like to have her on the show. This is her second visit. We did a talk before, uh, maybe in my first 10 episodes. And uh, we talked all about sun. We really, really focused. And we do cover, actually, again, some updates on the whole sun conspiracy and why you need it. But we go very deep in this episode into all things natural beauty. So a little more about Nadine. She's got a new book out called Renegade Beauty. I've got a copy of it right here on my computer in front of me. And it is awesome. Now, I'm waiting to get the hard copy 
to really dive in uh, because it's hard for me to read PDF books you know, on a computer. I want to sit down with the actual book. But uh, I have scanned it for this interview and it is powerful and it's totally in alignment with everything I talk about on the show and my whole philosophy for health. She's also the author of another book of hers I have in hard copy called Holistic Dental Care, The Complete Guide to Healthy Teeth and Gums, which is another topic we cover at depth in this particular interview. So here's a summary of the knowledge bombs Nadine nukes us with in this episode. One, the importance of sun and why sunscreens are not the answer. How in ancient times the sun was used as a medical treatment. The fact that thousands of vitamin D receptors live in and on our bodies. Really trippy stuff. You've got vitamin D receptors actually in your organs. Very cool information. Why vitamin D3 is one of the most vital nutrients and is crucial to a strong immune system. How a lack of D3 causes bone disease and cavities. The dirty little secret about sunscreens that the industry doesn't want you to know. We're going to tell you though, myth busting once again on the podcast. Why breasts and genitals need sunshine. It's not just a ploy to get people naked. You really need to get sun all over your body. Why commercial deodorants are so dangerous and what to use instead. How wearing certain types of bras increase the risk of breast cancer. Wah, wah, wah. The environmental impact of using hair dyes and chemical beauty products. How women have been brainwashed into overusing makeup. Wow, especially here in Hollywood, y'all. Seriously. And what are the best and worst foods to eat for skin? skin health and why eating vegetable oils is the worst. The reason Nadine stopped being a vegan after giving birth to her son. The important role that essential oils play in the power of natural beauty products and the scientific research that supports their efficacy. How to avoid fake essential oils. Your dental microbiome and why you need to protect it to avoid tooth decay. And then the real reason why sugar rots your teeth. Then we find out one question I've really always wanted to ask Nadine, and that is, is oil pulling a real thing or is it totally bogus? And if it is a real thing, which oils work best? The secret to whitening your teeth, and a little hint there, it doesn't come from the outside. And then finally, Nadine gives us a little bit of a heads up as to why we might want to avoid doing traditional teeth whitening at our dentist. I did this years ago and it actually wrecked my teeth, so she's going to explain why that happened and help you <laughs> to avoid that hopefully in the future. Okay, so this is an action-packed double episode. I'm really excited to bring Nadine back to the show. So now I give you the one, the only Nadine Artemis. Welcome back to the Lifestylist Podcast, Nadine. I'm so happy to be back. I'm happy too. Round two. So you've got your, <laughs> by the time this comes out, your new book, Renegade Beauty, will have come out. It'll be out a couple of weeks by the time people are hearing this. I've been going over the advanced copy and I'm super into it. Yay. Yeah, I'm excited for you. I think it's going to be a really, really big hit for you. Thank you. I put all I know so far in there. <laughs> I can tell that. And another thing I wanted to make sure and ask you about, just because we've been messaging a bit about this, is your amp coil. I know you're one of the few people I know that's gotten a hold of one of those. Are you having fun with that thing? Oh, my gosh. It's our new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I've turned a couple of people onto it too. I just, you know, as you explore and we explore, I mean, it's our kind of our lifestyle to explore all the great offerings of the earth and health. And I just feel as you begin to know and feel everything in the universe is vibration. And so it seems like the perfect tool for this day and age, because there's only so far too that we can chart and take our supplements and make sure we got this, that, and that. Because at the end of the day, it's uh, really what puts you in that meditative vibrational state. And the Amcoil really just delivers on that level. Yeah. Have, I, I know you and your family live somewhat remote because on Instagram, you're always at a lake. <laughs> like, <laughs> that must be near your house or at your house. Um, but It's our front yard. Oh my God. I'm green. It's ridiculous. I'm green with envy. If we were on video right now, you would see the green coming over my face. Um, but I, I, I wonder, I don't know how many people, you know, your friends live nearby, but what's happened for me since I got the amp coil is 
my little uh, domicile of solitude that I've been living in for two years with <laughs> really like very few guests. I'm somewhat of a social person, but I'm not like a big dinner party person. I don't drink. I'm, you know, just, I come home at night, I chill. I'm kind of a homebody. But all of a sudden when I got the amp coil, like all the homies are like all of a sudden, hey, can I stop by? I'm like, dude, it's four in the afternoon on Tuesday. Like what? <laughs> well, I want to use the amp coil. You know, it's like, I, I kind of have like a little clinic going where now the friends come over and they want to use the clear light sauna and the amp coil and the lasers and the biomat. <laughs> I'm like, I, I think I'm like, I need to start charging people uh, 20 bucks to get in or something. Have you found that uh, there's been a gravitational pull since you got the amp coil? Oh, for sure. Really? You um, have? Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I, you know, it's, I felt it coming like even before we got it, but also it's our goal uh, to, to have one for our team. Oh, that cool. That they can use. That's like, yeah, next on our list. Oh, that's a great idea. So great. Yeah, that's yeah. a great idea. In fact, I had a couple of friends over last night. We had a little tea ceremony here. And uh, it's like, I love running the demo harmonizer journey for people. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. it just like <laughs> knocks everyone on their ass. I put them on the bio mat and just, you know, turn the lights, get some mood lighting going. It's really fun to be able to see, see someone's nervous system, like just relax before your very eyes. It's cool. Totally. So good. I'm glad you're enjoying that. So tell us about Renegade Beauty. You know, I just got the copy. So I, I always am super annoyed when I haven't like fully read somebody's book before I interview them. But this all happened very fast. So I've just been kind of like getting my bullet points. But one thing that I can tell already is that and I already knew this about your approach, but it's very much rooted in the elements and in botanicals and everything comes back to Mother Nature, which is the only way that I'm able to contextualize all of my health practices and everything I do is actually using the elements. And, you know, like our mutual friend, Daniel Vitalis is, uses this framework a lot. And I see that you've done that in a book. So give us like your spiel on, on the book and what it's all about. Yes. Yeah, so um, it's renegade beauty and it's kind of, you know, it's like a, it's an owner's manual in a way for the body. I think for this day and age, I draw from ancient philosophy and ancient methods of taking care of the body and then bring it up to modern day and looking at even modern science to, to uh, back up some of the ancestral claims. And it's really modern on another level too. It deals with everything we kind of need to know in present day. And it's also guided, it's guided by over, you know, two decades uh, for formulating with botanicals and delving into health, especially women's health, and then guided by all the thousands and thousands of questions um, that I've received from men and women over the years about what's coming up as imbalances for themselves and that kind of thing. So it's all there, and I really wanted it to be complete. So there's chapters on, you know, everything from the skin's microbiome to the oral microbiome to breast health, yoni health. Um, birthing. Yay, breasts and, and yonis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Much needed discussion around them, you know, with some new, new input as well. I, well, um, we're going to definitely yeah. get into that. I can only imagine, you know, having obviously grown up a male, I was given very, not really given a manual for my parts. They seem pretty obvious in terms of what you're <laughs> supposed to do with them and not do with them. But, uh, but I can only imagine, you know, women growing up kind of in the Western paradigm are probably not given a lot of accurate information in terms of caring for themselves in a, in a reproductive uh, way, right? Yeah, so much of that information has been skewed and really come from centuries of uh, male models, you know, just it's like, well, men have that. So women have to, you know, eat from a Freudian level to a medical level. I actually did my uh, university thesis on the female orgasm. I sort of oh wow, like, <laughs> really? Yeah, a philosophical and historical look at how it's sort of been examined and portrayed in medical literature as well as literature, and um, you know, from Freud's like dark continent of the female body to um, you know, he also just felt like there was this whole thing because women's orgasms are less visible that they may not have them. <laughs> they're just, they're <laughs> yeah. all fake. Uh oh, we're doomed <laughs> then, <fake>. guys. <laughs> yeah. Or like we're just the inverted version of a man, like of the male model. Right, right. You know, God, it's, 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 
There's, so deep. Yeah, it's there's deep. so much crazy misinformation. I was just interviewing uh, Robin uh, Burzen from Parsley Health the other day, who's a highly educated and skilled uh, MD trained in the Western medical model and then moved into functional medicine and now has this amazing sort of membership model for functional medicine called Parsley Health. And she just had a baby and we were going through the whole experience of how she, she kind of did a mashup of of, you know, a natural childbirth with backup hospital help. You know, I think she was in a unique position Mm -hmm. because she has some pull in terms of the traditional medical community and hospitals and all of that being an MD, but we were going into some of this stuff and she had a boy and I was like, I asked her this question and I was like, oh, I hope she has the answer I want being a man. And I said, did you circumcise your boy? And she's like, no, my husband didn't think it was cool. So I was just said, okay. I was like, oh, wow, thank God. But we, we sort of talked about it. It's one of those weird things that we've just grown to accept and there's not really like any basis for it in this day and age, you know? Totally. It's like the, it's one of these accepted, you know, genital mutilations that have been perpetuated on the males of the world for a long time. And, and then no one's really stopped to go, or many people haven't stopped to go, well, wait, why are we doing that? You know? Yes. I mean, luckily, yeah, there has been a few. And also, and then you've got Europe, which is a lot of European countries generally don't circumcise the men. Like, or it's, you know, it's mixed. So, um, right. We have to find our way through that. And yeah, there's been so much sort of medical experimentation and, you know, as, as girls and, and, and really, you know, male teenagers these days, as we go through puberty, I mean, we're just delivered so many skewed messages from, you know, a deeply consumeristic culture to all these products that we, you know, that we're supposed to need to get to adulthood. And we're taught that, you know, respectable young ladies make their bodies polite, you know, by containing the fluids and using (laughs) antiperspirant and primping with perfume and have the pills and all that kind of stuff. And then I feel like our, our mother's generation and our grandmothers, I mean, they had so much experimentation done to them medically, you know, with um, hormone replacement therapy, the early birth control pills, which, you know, it's not like they're any better today. A lot of them are actually worse. And then, um, you know, with like, you don't, you know, have a hysterectomy after you've had children to them, you know, and then we've got thyroidectomies um, being a huge issue right now. And, uh, Oh, there's all this stuff. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like real life the Frankenstein model you know it's just so it's so totally. weird I think at some point in the hopefully not too distant future we're gonna look back on so much of medicine now especially as it pertains to these issues and just be like oh my god we were literally living in the dark ages so let's jump into I have you know of course a um, a non-linear way of having conversations with people like you but there are definitely some things that I want to cover now way back when and and I actually want to thank you too for coming on the show so early on back in the day before I really had any show to speak of to be honest because you were on episode <laughs> six which would have meant like I didn't actually have a show out yet I don't know if I mentioned that to you but that my strategy was to like <laughs> record 15 shows with the most prominent people I could find, you being one of them, uh, whoever I could coerce into doing it, and then release like 10 in a row for 10 days, which I did. So first off- Oh, that's smart. (laughs) Yeah, I thought so. Uh, So first off, thank you for having faith in me. And the show has grown. I'm almost to a million downloads. And your episode, which was number six, has been and is still uh, a really big hit because we really ended up focusing on the sun. So I want to encourage listeners to go back and definitely check that out because it's such a deep dive. But for those people that won't make it back that far in the feed, I'm up over 100 episodes now. Can you give us a little recap of why the sun is actually important and vital to our health and then go into a little bit about the issues with sunscreen? Because when I do talks now on health and biohacking, I always say, oh, you need to get out in the sun and get naked. And people look at me like I'm a freaking Martian. They really have this belief system that the sun is going to kill them and give them cancer and they have to stay out of the sun. And it's just like, it's the twilight zone. So can you break down your perspective on that? Oh, for sure. Um, one of my, that's really one of my favorite subjects. And I have dedicated a whole chapter to it in the book because there is so much to undo. And yet we have just a wealth of historical and modern scientific data that really 
can help us reframe our minds around that. And what I like to always start with when talking about the sun is to really let people know that our skin was designed to be exposed to the sun's rays. It's like our human form of photosynthesis. I don't even know if it's like we have to use it as a metaphor. It really is our form of photosynthesis. Right, right. And um, it's so important for us to receive this cosmic pollination from these wavelengths of creation that really imbue our bodies with nutrients that we know about and nutrients that I think we will still discover. We still haven't even been able to uh, name or, you know, or classify all of the sun's wavelengths and colors. So we, it's important for us to know that we have thousands of vitamin D receptors all over our body, including places where the sun doesn't necessarily shine, like in our intestines or our prostate, our breasts. And these vitamin D receptors means they're receptors for vitamin D, and they need to be engaged with and filled with the sun's rays. And this creates a different type of vitamin D it creates a water-soluble vitamin D3, which is essential to our health. So it's great that we have vitamin D3 supplements because they're very much needed. And I, you know, I always begin taking mine when it comes to November because I live in Canada. But we, that's it create, that's a fat soluble vitamin D3. And we need the water soluble D3 because it creates valuable nutrients. It's got the precursor hormones. It creates a cholesterol sulfate that is essential to our health. It purifies our blood. Our vitamin D receptors are just such a huge part of our immune system that if they're not brimming with vitamin D3, then we basically, you know, don't have an immune system. And it's very easy for bacteria to thrive in that environment when they're not brimming with vitamin D3, actually bacterial lingons take control, and then our immune system crashes. And now scientists are seeing because I always think like I always think like a good microbiome and probiotics are like a good answer for a lot of things so when I was diving deep into the subject I was like you know I just felt like saying you know be in the sun have the probiotics so I was really looking so then I wanted to research connections um, with those two concepts in mind And I found studies and and interestingly, even through a drug study that wasn't related in a way, but I could, I could start connecting the dots and these bacterial lingons, if we let them, you know, kind of go have their way, we do open the the door for things like Epstein-Barr disease. And now through this modern understanding of these scientific studies, we are now seeing why there was such a heyday of using the sun to heal, helio, heliotherapy, meaning sun therapy, at the turn of the 19th century. So in 1904, we have the Dr. Niels Feinsen. He won the Nobel Peace Prize for his work with sun therapy. And then Dr. Auguste Rollier in the 1920s really furthered his work, and he had these sun clinics in Switzerland. And I encourage people to uh, go onto Google and look up some images by just putting in like Lezen, Dr. Rollier, R-O-L-L-I-E-R, and looking at some of these pictures of the clinics because they're like hospitals, but they have verandas and everybody's beds are outside and people are sunning. And then if you, you can find these before and after pictures of children that, um, so every people would go there for, for, you know, um, rickets and which was like a deforming of the bone which we think we're over but we're not because bone diseases still exist cavities you know that's a big part of a lack of a vitamin d3 um then they had a huge issue with tuberculosis so people would flock to these clinics and it really made headlines at the time around the world even in like time magazine for his absolute cures for tuberculosis and other diseases So now with the modern science, so we're seeing like why this was effective against tuberculosis and Epstein-Barr using the sunlight. And with the before and after pictures of the children, you see these children that have like, um, you know, deformed, for lack of a better word, their spines and these open wounds and 
just not vibrant health. And then a year later, they've got the healthy glow, their spines are straight, their wounds are closed, and it's just so beautiful to see. So we're, you know, living in a sunlight deprived culture, not just through this lobbying, you know, I feel like we've been lobbied into a loss of sunlight for all the reasons I am not sure, but also just because of our, you know, modern work life, uh, home, like lifestyle. So we're not as exposed to the elements anymore. We're working, uh, you know, a lot in, in the nine to five times. And so we haven't really made space and time in our, in our days to bask in the solar rays. And it really is so key to our health and immunity and great skin. So we often think that the sun is the antithesis of healthy skin, but it isn't. And there's lots of studies that show that as well. And then there's all that thought that it causes cancer, yet it is essential for us to thrive as human beings. There's a great book. It's hard to find, uh, like you can get it used, but it's like kind of getting expensive, but it's great. If you really, really want to dive into it, it's called Myth on Myth. Sun and Melanoma, and it is written by Dr. Ackerman, who is the founding father of dermatopathology, which is like a more serious study than uh, dermatology. And so he he wrote this book, and he gathered every study that's ever been, and um, it's pretty current. I think he died in 2009, but it, it has all the studies. And what we really begin to understand is that things like melanoma actually occur when people have less time in recreational sunlight, when they're more exposed to fluorescent lighting. And, uh, you know, it's not the sun as the harbinger of this disease. I think that's <laughs> what's, uh, that's what is drives me so crazy when I try to encourage people to get sun is they always think it's going to give you cancer. And, and am I mistaken in that? I, I heard somewhere, read somewhere that actually when people get skin cancer, most of the time, where it develops are in areas of the skin that don't actually get a lot of sun. Yeah, that is. So there is a few types of skin cancers and that's melanoma. And that's like the most lethal and it's, you know, you don't want to get it, but there is so much groundbreaking work that was really more looking like a fungal issue. And the people that get melanoma, you know, it's not the people that are out in the sun or the people that are closer to the equator. It's people with very low vitamin D levels in their body. And then there's the basal cell carcinoma. But also studies are showing that, you know, the more you use sunscreen, that your chances of one of the milder types of skin cancer increase, moles increase. And so what we learn now is, and actually this isn't, you know, some of these studies are from the 80s, so it's not like groundbreaking research. You just have to sort of put it all together. So with sunscreen, generally we know about the carcinogens of the ingredients and the negative effect on our endocrine system. So that's sort of older story. But what is really important for people to understand is that when we apply a sunscreen, we are separating the UVA and the UVB rays. And the UVA is what's coming into our skin. And the UVA separated from UVB makes it a lot less beneficial for our skin. And we're not getting the vitamin D because the UVB creates the vitamin D. UVA on its own is not a good skin story. So, oh, so interesting. And, yeah. and, and doesn't the same thing happen if you're behind glass? Like if you're inside exactly. your car or you're wearing um, any, any type of eyewear that you're blocking one of the UV spectrum? Yes, that's exactly it. And yeah, so if you've got, you know, you're in your LA traffic, let's say that same time every day. And so that one arm, it's like always getting hit by like the setting sun or, you know, whatever your situation is. And it's like got more freckles on the other arm. And that's because it's generally coming through the window because that's just the UVA. And really neat that you bring up sunglasses because, you know, there's a time and place for them. But what Dr. Rollier discovered is that you can get benefits from being in the sun and also being in the shade because you're still activating the suprachiasmatic nucleus which is in the center of our brain. I love it when but, you say that word. <laughs> you said that word last time. I was like rewinding it 50 times. Like what? 
<laughs> Carry on. <laughs> um, but he found that none of the healing effects of the sun would happen if that's to the skin as well, if sunglasses were worn. That's interesting. So in terms of the sunscreen, as you said, a lot of people, yeah, I think people listening to this, I'm hoping are somewhat aware that the chemicals in your traditional sunscreen that you'd get at a, at a drugstore are really, really toxic and would probably greatly increase your chances of getting some kind of cancer down the line um, after a lifetime of use. So if somebody wants to build up to being able to tolerate sun or, you know, say someone that's very fair skinned, you know, like a, my friend Harrison, I always refer to him. He's like, um, you know, got bright orange hair and tons of freckles. And I was, you know, talking to him about the sun and I don't think he used any type of sunscreen, but he just very gradually went, you know, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. And now he can almost go out with the rest of us, you know, <laughs> camping or swimming or whatever without, you know, ending up being taken out and on a stretcher. Uh, are there <laughs> any, are there any types of you know, sunscreens or oils or anything natural that can be used to help protect the skin. Like when you go to Whole Foods, they have all these natural sunscreens. And even me, though, I'm not going to use any unnatural types. I'm always like, eh, those probably don't work. I mean, is there anything natural that actually helps reduce the severity without, you know, blocking off the UVA and B and all that weird stuff? Yeah. So there's many things here. So one thing to know too, is like, everybody's obviously different and it depends on your geography like where you're located, what the latitude is, what the weather is, and your ancestry to be to sort of monitor what kind of time in the sun you need. And there is an app for that. There's D-Minder. It's very handy. It'll take in your longitude, latitude, and uh, sort of say, okay, today, with, and they bring in the weather of the day, and it'll be like, okay, today you need like 20 minutes to get this many IUs of Oh, sunshine. wow. Yeah, That's cool. It's pretty handy. Yeah. That's neat. Um, I just go for it though when it's sunny out and I found a moment. You can find a moment. But, right. and then definitely I, I advise to like start slowly and start in the spring. And the spring and fall sun is also very good because you have cooler air around it. And that's very healing as well. And also helps to create muscle tone. And I just love like, so like Dr. Rollier knew that. And then also ancient Greek, uh, the original like Olympic athletes, they were required to be in the sun and to work out in the sun. And that was the original gymnasiums. They were outside and they knew about the sun's rays. And there's a really interesting um, sort of footnote in history when one of those ancient Greeks, uh, Herodotus, I think he, he just, he went to the battlefield of Pelusium and he saw like there was all these skulls and it was, it was between the Egyptians. And now I can't remember the other culture, but the Egyptians, um, never covered their heads because they actually shaved them when they were young to get it exposed to the sun's rays and the other culture in the battle, which is uh, escaping my mind right now, but they wore like skull caps. And then he said like when they threw, like they, th I guess they threw rocks at the skulls and the Egyptians one, one Egyptian skulls were solid and the other ones were so brittle. They would just break without even hardly touching them because they didn't like because the sun has such a strong relationship to our bones, the formation of our bones. It vitamin D three, what we now know, they didn't know it back then. It ushers the minerals into our bones, so calcium and magnesium goes into the bones rather than just staying in the blood supply. Whoa! And so, yeah, so that's why it's so good for our teeth, and why it's also essential. Like it's great that everybody is understanding more about vitamin D three, but it must be taken with vitamin k2 right right actually you know there's one of those vitamin i think it's thorn uh, labs t-h-o-r-n-e they make a k2 and d3 like serum you know like a supplement yeah where they come together uh, yeah which i, then, I was yeah, buying it for a while but it's it's a bad design on the bottle there's not like a dropper you have to just like shake it essentially it's one of those little one drop at a time plastic oh. caps so yeah. it just drove me nuts and I ended up pulling the thing off because I'm, you know, I'm like, whatever the <laughs> yeah. dose is, it can't be enough. I just never, I always take five <laughs> times more than whatever the recommended dose. But that's, that's interesting. I love, you know, what's cool about your work, Nadine, is that you're like, you're an earth mama, which I'm an earth papa. And you yeah. come from this elemental, just common sense, like follow mother nature approach. But you're also one thing I, I don't have so much of is you're, you really know the geeky science end of it too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure how that evolved, but 
Um, well, it's important for the buy-in because you. I find you know hosting the show that you have two types of people essentially. I mean, I'm going to generalize in a in a really gross manner, but you have like your total woo-woo people that just go along with anything, and they're off trying to be a breatharian and shit. And then you <laughs> and then you have and then you have your super skeptic scientific people that don't believe anything unless there's 50 you know triple blind studies and all this stuff you know so <laughs> I, I like that you have some of the background there so in wrapping up the sun piece uh i don't know that i got a very clear answer on are there any oh, yeah. like topical things like any creams or oils or anything yes. that, that we could use for our own sunscreen or any of those like zinc ones valid or is that all lame yeah, no, there's a lot to that. So there's all those ingredients, which you got the endocrine disruptors. And then the crazy thing is the main active ingredient in like a commercial sunblock is oxybenzene, which is non-carcinogenic until it's exposed to sunlight. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up, yeah. man. No, you can't. And then, so then the health food store is like, maybe, okay, you still got to read your labels in every category, but there could be titanium dioxide which is a no-no. And yes, so there's zinc. That's a block. And but you need to look for uncoated non nano particle size zinc, just because that's the cleanest zinc. Now what zinc does is it deflects the sun's rays. So it's literally it's a block, right? So it's not it's not about building up your tan or your melanin. It's literally like I'm going surfing in Hawaii for seven hours and I need to put something on my nose. Right. right. Um, so that's that situation. And then I've been working with uh, botanicals forever. And then also in my 20s, I, I would go to the desert often and experiment with plant oils and the sun, because that's really fun for me. <laughs> so I have formulated something called Everybody Loves the Sunshine. And that is just a bevy of beautiful oils that have what I like to call a sun harmonizing factor because SPF is only for synthetic ingredients. That's the FDA classification and it has to, it's like strict and it's all about, it's a whole other world. Oh, so if you're seeing something that has an SPF reading, it's inherently going to be chemically based then. So you can just like yes. scratch that off the list if you're a health minded person. Totally. So know if you've got your zinc, that's your block. Like the, which you may need at certain times if you know you can't wear a hat or something, right? Or a kid's nose. But I, you know, I have a son, and like I may sometimes I might have to put just a strip on his nose, but he's never lying down and soaking in the rays. So I find it doesn't really hit him in the same way as like me lying out for two hours. So you know what I mean? So I think like, yeah. just think about that with kids. Like you got to think about where is the sun really hitting them? Like the shoulders, the nose, that kind of thing. Right. Because you do want the, those kids to get the sun for sure. I mean, it's a p whole part of their immune system. And like if women are vitamin D deficient while they're pregnant, they can give birth to a, a child that will be prone to juvenile diabetes. I mean, this sun thing is so huge. It's like your rate of getting breast cancer is reduced by 50% if you're vitamin D sufficient. And then there's like 2000 studies that go on and on about, you know, different types of diseases that really some of the root causes from just not having those vitamin D receptors brimming with the vitamin D3. But back to the oils. So it's like you, we can think oils like olive oil or jojoba, uh, you know, and then we've got the rich pigmented oils like sea buckthorn, calendula, and then oils like frankincense and geranium, which in, and sandalwood, which in other studies have shown that it prevents the cells from going down an abnormal pathway. It can bring the cells, you know, back into like a normal place, which is what you want. And um, so all these things, when they're combined, can create a pretty juicy serum for you to engage like it's sort of a medium that allows you to engage with the sun for probably like an extended period of time that just with nothing that would be more than just with like nothing on. And again, that's going to vary for different people. For some, it's going to give them that extra 20 minutes. For some, you know, you got a good European or Mediterranean sort of skin color. You could, you could have another hour in the sun. And so while they study some of these ingredients in the lab, like we include red raspberry seed oil and in some like that is showing to have 
it scatters the rays. And so it's, it, it's thought that it could kind of have an equivalent of a 25 SPF, which is pretty major. Um, but again, you got to work with your own skin type. And all of these oils from the plant, whether it's the essential oil or the fat oil, they are all in that plant protecting it from the sun. Like the jojoba plant is a desert plant. Myrrh is a desert plant. And so they're allies for the plant and for our bodies. And you can kind of think of it, it kind of has a feeling of like a 7 to a 12 SPF or like a 6 to a 12, you know, so just even olive oil or coconut oil could be giving you that extra, you know, time in the sun. And it certainly is great for for bringing the sun's rays. And I like to think of it when you compare, like, we also think of like what our bodies are offering the sun. So are we fueled on soda and mazola? And then, are, you know, and then oh, have you got man. like that foundation on and the chemical sunscreen, and then that's baking into your skin. Right. And that's really the cause of things like hyperpigmentation and premature wrinkling. And I have a great quote in my book that is from a, a doctor in the, 20, in the 1920s. And he talks about how it's like the cure for wrinkles and acne because it like gets the juices flowing and gets it plumped up. It's antibacterial. And so you have all these benefits of being in the sun that are the opposite of what we think today. And then we are not being in the sun. And then we buy spray on tans and we apply chemicals for acne and it's all a little bit mixed up. The spray, the spray on tans. <laughs> that does not, I don't care if it's like organic or whatever. That does not sound like a good idea to me. I've never thought that was smart. Stand by for a brief yet crucial announcement. Since I launched this podcast over a year and a half ago, I've received literally hundreds of inquiries from listeners asking me for my top recommendations in terms of health supplements and biohacking technologies. Now, I'm someone who's been borderline obsessive about health for the past 21 plus years. It's kind of just my thing. It's what I'm good at and it's what I really enjoy. And I really love passing my findings and research on to my friends and listeners. What many of you don't know, however, based on the number of emails that I still get asking the same questions, is that I now have a store on my website where I've curated all of the best stuff that I've found in all of these years of research and development. So if you want my recommendations, it's really easy. You can find them all in one place. Go to lukestory.com forward slash store. And there you will find every single product and service that I have personally found and vetted and feel confident in recommending to you, the listener. So again, go to lukestory.com forward slash store and you'll find all of my top recommended products there. It's important to note however that I do not personally sell anything however on my store you'll find a description and a link and in many cases even a discount for all of the products and services that I endorse on my web store so go to lukestory.com forward slash store to find everything you'll need to support a healthy lifestyle I'm such a sun dog I just have to cover this even though as I said if you guys want more go back to episode six um, and you'll get plenty more of this, but there's two other things about it that I wanted to cover. One is just the mood elevation. I mean, I can be feeling, I don't know, some anxiety or a little mild depression. And like, even just today, I don't know, today I just woke up. I just feel weird. I got some shit going on. I'm having a weird life right now, you know? <laughs> and so I went and had an ice bath at my brother's gym, Story Fitness. And, uh, and then afterward I got out in the sun and just did a little Tai Chi and I just out there as naked as I could be, you know, basically in the alley behind the gym. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, the combination of the cold exposure, the ice, and then getting that sun, I was just like, oh, I actually, I literally got in my car and I was like, wait, why was I tripping earlier? I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. You know, put on a, totally. a little mantra in the car, did a little chanting and, and then came over here and we started this recording. But, you know, it kind of, I think from the, you know, the mood elevation stuff, I've always looked at when people go on vacation, they always go somewhere to, well, not always, but many times where there's somewhere where there's a lot of sun and water. And it's like, I think maybe it's not even that we're on vacation. It's just that we're being exposed to sun and water for so many hours per day. <laughs> and that makes us feel happy. And then looking yes, at- Yes, because right? it's like we're engaging with the elements, which is again, like one of the main things in the book, we're just, we need the elements to actually beautify us. Like that needs to be our first line of beautification. 
Right, right. And then there's probably, and again, you know, the science isn't my number one top strength, but there's got to be a correlation between D3, the production of melatonin, our circadian rhythms, and then the cascade of hormones and neurotransmitters around those compounds that are so directly related to the sun. Like I just got, there's got to be something to that cortisol, melatonin, the whole balance, right? Yeah. And it, 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 it boosts our gut health, our immune system, every single part and system of our body needs sunshine. And so does the skin. And it's not the number one cause of wrinkles. Ooh, what, what is the number one cause of wrinkles? Um, well, you know, I think mother, one of your the biggest, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, Stress. I, mean, really, I think is the PUFAs, the polyunsaturated fatty acids. Oh. So diets being filled with, um, you know, mazola, canola and corn, soy, the rancid oils, rancid omega sixes that just wreak havoc in our body, you know, and then that's what we might be in the sun going in the sun with and also just applying all these chemicals. I mean, it's amazing that women fear like getting out, you know, walking from their car to the park to the mall, like just that that two minutes of sunshine, we so many people in our culture feel that, you know, that's going to be the end story of their beauty. Well, you know, what's funny is uh, working in the fashion and entertainment industry for a number of years. Um, I, I have noticed that women that, um, you know, are maybe even in like their early 30s that have been in the business for a long time tend to have really bad skin without makeup. And I started to make the correlation. It's like, oh, my God, day in, day out, they're just getting you know, caked with the super toxic makeup over and over and over and over again, much more so than your average woman who, you know, puts on some makeup to go out to a dinner or something like that, but just like full on face makeup all day, wash it off with chemicals, put the chemicals back on. And, uh, Mm. and I've, I've made the connection there that that's probably not great for the longevity of your, your skin health and that youthful appearance. Whereas, people that aren't in that industry that are the same age tend to kind of have better skin if the diet and all of that stuff is on point. Yeah. You know, that and craft services. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Help too much. Cause the craft services um, is all yeah. canola oil and corn syrup. Oh yeah. There's, there's- a lot of uh, friends of mine that are actors. They do bring their libation stash to set. Oh, nice. And it's funny how many makeup artists have, uh, have, are so excited about the products and then they they'll use them underneath and use them to help remove the makeup and that kind of thing oh cool cool so at least there's yeah. like a layer of protection there uh, yes. <laughs> lastly last thing on the sun thing because i could go on for literally five hours about just the me sun too. <laughs> um is is people tend to not believe me when i talk about how important it is to get your breasts and genitalia into the sun. I mean, literally I'll do that when I do talks, I talk about that and I can just, people go like, all right, I'm done with this guy. <laughs> like they just, they, <laughs> they just don't get it. So wh- why might we want to, I mean, for men, I mean, there's a lot of studies about the, the increased production of testosterone from getting our wedding tackle out into the sun. But what about, um, <laughs> what do you have to say about breasts, genitals, getting sunshine? Yes, get it all in there. There's a uh, there's a quote that Doreen Virtue put out there one time, and it's, a, it's from an Italian doctor, and it is uh, the doctor visits where the sun doesn't shine. Oh, that's funny. And it's probably not exact, but that idea that what you know isn't getting sunlight, you know, gets uh, you know. So we think about too. You think about um, you know even nature or areas of the forest, that kind of thing, like or things that are mildewy and damp or a damp basement because it hasn't had sunshine and we all know that you know the ray the sun rays can can clean and sanitize you put your laundry on the line there's a lot of benefits that way so we really do and i mean we think about where we came from i mean we weren't always wearing clothes and we were like you know sitting on the soil and getting those microbes and engaging with the sun and so we're not going back to that phase but we do need to think about, you know, how we can engage with the elements a little bit more. And I do think we're at a really neat stage in our evolution because, you know, generally speaking, we're not going to be dying by the elements. We've got our running water and our shelter. So now we can engage with the elements, you know, with a little more convenience and a little more luxury, like, Right. You know, right. so let's celebrate that and let's engage with it more because we, you know, we're really cutting ourselves off 
Let's find a nude beach and a hot springs. <laughs> there you go. That's one reason why we live here. I'm like, I need to know oh, that, you know, I can swim and sun. That is amazing. Having to go behind a back alley. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. In the city, it's tough. I really have to hack my environment in order to be able to do that. Okay. So in your book, you state that on average, women use nine personal care products per day and that 25% of women use as many as 15 per day. That is astonishing to me. Mm-hmm. That's Totaling all- up to hundreds of chemicals and, um, and ingestion. Now, you know, obviously, I don't mean eating it, but just the body absorbing it up to five pounds a year. Oh, my God. So you're saying when we – so we're not – eating these chemicals in all of those products, but by putting them on our skin, we're absorbing it to the degree that it could equal five pounds going into our body. Yeah, that's the stat. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) That is so, imagine just like taking a five pound, like KFC bucket, you know, stuffed with, uh, (laughs) with foundation and God knows what else and eating it. So, I mean, I think there's obviously your company, Living Libations, does amazing things in this space. And I can't even keep track of how many products you guys have on your site. It's like an (laughs) insane suite of all sorts of things. Uh, But it seems like I think I don't know. I guess it depends where you live. I'm, I'm in a bubble here in L.A. because so many people are kind of becoming aware of this. There seems to be a lot of great personal care products that are less toxic these days. I mean, have you seen over the years that you've been in business, that this is something that's becoming more widespread? Yeah. Like I've been, I, I opened my first store when I, in 1992 and that, and I've been formulating before that, but that was sort of my first foray into it. <clears throat> and uh, the marketplace was smaller then, but it's great because you're seeing so many cottage industries, you know, especially through like Etsy and different things, but a lot more people just like making beautiful skincare and then just selling it to their tribe. And it's really exciting. And I think it's making a dent because because you can see the giants going, okay, let's buy that up or let's do our natural line. Um, but of course, it's still got, got issues with it. Or they're really like I have a chapter, you know, I really go into the microbiome in the book. And I'm seeing like a lot of the bigger skincare companies like market to the microbiome now, which is really interesting. I guess that it's that supply and demand thing where, you know, now you for a few years have had organic foods in Costco and half the people are like pissed, like, oh, why does Costco have organic food? You know, (laughs) it's like like there's something wrong with that. Oh, it's becoming commercialized. Like, oh, my God, thank God it is. But I, I think within that, too, just thinking about the organic food in Costco is not going to be of the same caliber in many cases as the food that you might find in Erwan. And, you know, the same could be said for a lot of the things in whole food being passed off as natural skincare products or food, but Hey, listen, like at least they're getting there. And then, like you said, for people that are a bit more discerning, there's companies like yours or there's very independent manufacturers that are just kind of, you know, making stuff and selling it at the farmer's market or locally, as you said, on, or on Etsy or something like that. So it's exciting to kind of watch this industry flourish. And I'm stoked because there's just more stuff that I feel comfortable using. Um, so I think when most people think about personal care products and beauty in general, they're thinking about women because women uh, by and large consume and use more of these products. But do you have any stats or any information on, on us dudes? And what we're up to? Yeah, well, I know we have a really nice following of dudes that love libations. And right. that's really fun because you just it's just so fun when men are getting into it and they know the difference and they can really discern. And I love making like really rocking rogue like men's colognes and deodorants and because I feel like when oh like just I feel like, you know, in the other realm of commercial colognes and stuff, I mean there's just when you get real roots and tree barks and stuff on men, like that combo is so great because when I'm making a, when I, with, the, with the ingredients that I work with, with the palette of beautiful raw materials, it really, it works with your aroma and with your natural aroma. So then you, everybody's, you know, creating their own unique clone, cologne when they, when they apply that to their bodies. And I just feel like it's very sensual to have that kind of combination. Yeah. I have a buddy of mine, (laughs) David, who his last name will remain unnamed, but (laughs) 
he he's like into the whole lifestyle, man. He he does all the stuff that our tribe does, but he he come he's one of the guys that comes over and uses my amp coil and uh and the sauna and he's got like really great style and you know he's really into aesthetics really healthy guy just very brilliant director photographer amazing dude and he's quite conscious but he was coming over to my house and i just gave him a key because he's like amp coiling every day and i started to come home and i would walk in the door and i'd be like what the hell is that smell it smells like chemicals and it took me a while to figure it out. I thought maybe I spilled some like cleaning products or something. You know, I'm looking around. <laughs> and then he was here one day and I was like, holy shit. I said, bro, do you wear cologne? He's like, yeah, it's Comme de Garçon. It's like this fancy, you know, it's like this fancy yeah. fashion cologne. I was like, bro, no, 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 no. You can't <laughs> bring that stuff. It was like in my sauna. I could smell it. It was it, because, oh. I, yeah, because I don't use that kind of stuff. And I'm not trying to be an elitist. It's just my body rejects it. I just don't like it around. But it's been, you know, 20 years since I've used any products that have any sort of unnatural anything. So it's interesting how as a guy, I've become so sensitive to that. And so I had to make a rule for anyone that wants to come over, uh, men or women included, like no perfume, no cologne, unless it's made of essential oils. But on that note, speaking of living libations and how these uh, botanicals that you've discovered in your career and then utilized in products, man, there is one thing that every single dude I know has gotten stuck on, and that's your Poetic Pits deodorant, mm, yeah. specifically the, the Palo Santo one, because there's a bunch of them. And my friends always, and even listeners to the show, a lot of guys have uh, given me feedback because I've mentioned it before and run your ads and stuff. And uh, the guys are like, I don't know, there's so many, which one do I pick? I'm like, I don't know. I just always pick the Palo Santo one. But that is like the most magical smell ever. It's crazy um, the way that mm. people love it, that wear it. And also um, when you're wearing it as a guy, and this is a huge plug to any of you guys listening, I swear to God, <laughs> like any woman you walk by or give a hug to, they're like, oh my God, you smell so good. I don't know if it's the combo of my chemistry and that particular one, but it is a, it's a home run. So uh, good job on that, giving us guys something alternative to use because I think men are probably smellier, I would think. And, you know, like deodorants probably, I'm, I'm just guessing. I've never really been around a woman that had BO, but I've been around dudes where you're like, man, you need to leave the room. Your shit is so <laughs> rank. <laughs> and some guys more so than others. So I think you've done a great service to all of us by making that product specifically. No problem. It's like people become like a Pied Piper with the poetic pits. They can be right. you know, just out of yoga or the gym and, and people are like, oh my God, like, who are you? What are you? So it's like just to the men out there, you'll be, uh, you'll be pleasing people. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. It is, ladies. it is like a Pied Piper situation is pretty cool. And then I'm like, I'm a smart ass. So I never let on to what it is. If I, you know, <laughs> give a girl a hug she's like oh my god you smell great i'm like yeah i don't know i guess it's just me <laughs> take I'm all the so credit <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was just wired like that and then what's the deal what's the deal with commercial i mean god i i still sometimes i'll go in like a rite aid or cvs and i'm you know walking through looking for freaking q-tips or anything safe that i could buy in there and uh yeah. i'll walk by like the deodorant section i go oh my god People are still using all these crazy like antiperspirant sprays and roll-ons and things like that. And for people that are, you know, maybe just new to some of this, could you enlighten us on some of the issues with what we would call it commercial or traditional deodorants and antiperspirants? For sure. And let me start with a quote from Walt Whitman. <laughs> Inter said, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> the scent of these armpits is an aroma finer than prayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Well, our armpits are, you know, an aphrodisiac area that secrete pheromones. And what's so cool when we work with essential oils and plant extracts is they are often the sort of, I think of them as the squeeze, the distilled extracts of the plant's pheromones. So it's like a match made in heaven. And yeah, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a sacred area. It's an aphrodisiac area. And it's definitely an area with thinner skin. And uh, especially for women or men or wherever, if you're shaving your armpits, you're going to be soaking more stuff in. And then we're applying these really toxic deodorants. And um, 
you know, talk about a microbiome, the armpits are, are on a microscopic level, like a rainforest, like a really lush rainforest brimming with diversity. And we need that we need all those microbes in there to do their job. So what's great about essential oils is that they can, um, they clean up the bad bacteria, but they're always working harmoniously with the beneficial bacteria. So when, you know, aluminum is just crazy. And we're, if we apply that daily, you can think of decades of accumulation, not to mention parabens as well. And when breast cancer is in the breast, but it also actually includes the lateral aspect of the breast, which is the armpit, really, essentially. Um, so if you know, a lot of women have like lymph, the lymph nodes removed from their armpit, if they have had breast cancer, um, when disease breast tissue was studied, 99% of the tissue was shown to have parabens in it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Huge fail. Huge fail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just, that totally makes sense though. When you look at like one of those medical drawings, that's a cross section of a breast and you see all those yeah. lymph nodes, they do go up into the armpit there and you're, you're putting these chemicals almost directly into this fatty tissue that is really susceptible to uh, the proliferation of cancer cells. Yeah. And what, and then we're compounding it with like by wearing bras that constrict the lymph nodes. So essentially breasts can get sort of a lymphedema. And so you've got, you're applying this toxin daily and then you're not really allowing that circulation out because then the, 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 the bra is sort of creating a bit of a, a lymphatic log jam and, you're constricting the flow of that area. So you're kind of getting this a cesspool of toxins and, and then just our own natural, you know, toxins for lack of a better word, but the stuff that need, you know, needs to be leaving our bodies daily. Right. So right. Yeah. What's the, what, a, what's the deal with, there. what's the deal with bras? I mean, are they, I, th- I, I don't know if it was you or someone else I heard talking about them. And I, I of course I didn't pay that much attention <laughs> not being a, a person that has to wear one at least yet. If I don't get to the gym soon, I might, but, uh, <laughs> But isn't there an issue just with the, you know, the under wiring and things like that of just kind of all of the circulation? I mean, is it, would you consider it to be unhealthy in general for women to wear bras? And I'm hoping for a yes here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> no. I've, I've done talks before and like <laughs> I started a new burn the bra movement and it looks literally women would go to the trash can and like they would just be like, take off their bras. Now it's all in, you know, so it's, and obviously there's many different situations, but you think of like, even like training bras and it's like, it's not necessarily how you want to start off womanhood. So what happens is uh, if you think about it, if you put your arm in a sling for a long time, the muscles would atrophy. And so by wearing bras a lot, you've got a bit of that issue because then the muscles aren't working as well. And yeah, there's the issue of the wires mainly though. I mean, you know, you can, there's so many options now with sort of like bralettes or just sort of form fitting tank tops with a bit of uh, lycra in there. You know, you can get like organic cotton with 3% lycra to hold them up, hold them in place. But when we're wearing them day in and day out, it's a bit of an issue. But the real thing to look for is when you remove your bra, if there's red marks anywhere around that, and if there is, that means you've really constricted the lymph there. So look into some other types of bras and and get them more fitted. Cool. Cool. That's that's good advice. I'm glad we got to cover that because I've tried to explain that to women and they think it's just a ploy <laughs> to get it off. <laughs> well, also, I think it's it's sort of like the, the wrinkles or the skin cancer with the sun thing. I, what I hear from women when I ask them about this is they're like, oh, if you don't wear a bra like 24-7, then your breasts sag and, and all of this kind of stuff. And then I've heard other people kind of on your end of the spectrum like, no, you actually – by, you know, not letting them get their natural support, you're, um, you know, losing muscle tissue and things like that. And they become sort of atrophied as you were describing. So what do you think about that in terms of just longevity of breast shape and buoyancy? Well, yeah, I mean, I think you want to be able to get them sort of reactivated and, and, you know, not just like cup them all the time. Um, you want to think about massaging them and that doesn't have to be a big deal. Like if, I mean, I'm, a, I always put oil on my body after the bath or the shower, 
and just include your breasts and just take an extra moment. It doesn't have to be a big breast massage moment, but it's just, we haven't really, it's sort of a part of our body that hasn't really been fully engaged, you know, it's right. except to be like sort of except for this sort of Las Las Vegas adulation or for their for other people. <laughs> right, right. But, you know? <laughs> We're like forgetting <laughs> those are actually a part of your body. They have a right to totally. be there. Well, you know what? Honestly, I always feel yeah, bad. It's take this, care of them. I mean, there's a lot of double standards, in, in, I suppose. In new ways. But I, I love in new ways. dude, I just love being naked in the sun, at least shirtless. Like today. I mean, for example, when I did my little ice bath and Tai Chi sun routine, I mean, oh my God, what a drag it would be if I was a female and I couldn't go out there and do that. I would be so annoyed. So I always, I kind of feel for women, it sucks. You can't just take your shirt off when you feel like it. It's this big thing. People are going to judge you or perv out on you or whatever. You know, I think that's the great thing about going to hot springs and things like that. People can kind of let loose and it's it's accepted and not such a big deal but it's yeah different it's almost like a weird discrimination or something it's strange it is when i was uh, in university it was a huge thing and i live in ontario canada and uh it was a huge thing at the time to legislatively pass that women can go topless if they want and we passed it so actually in ontario you can you can go topless in Ontario. That's can. cool. Yeah, you can. But so of course, what, like no. What are the real estate cause... prices like there? <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of options. I'm on my way. <laughs> all right, all right. Enough. I always have to keep it light, you know. So, with all, right. all of with all these toxic chemicals, the makeup, uh, you know, all of these lotions, creams, hair dyes, deodorants, lipstick, all of this stuff. What about the impact? on the environment. I, I think about that sometimes, you know, I'm, I drive through Hollywood and you have three hair salons per block and all day long people are getting their hair dyed in there and all of these chemical relaxers and it's just going right down the drain and somewhere, I guess, into the ocean or the water table or something like that. Do you know, do you have anything to say about the environmental impact of all these things? Yeah, well, I mean, it's just so, such a deep issue. It's kind of like petroleum, like, yeah, we'd like to all get off, but we need some of the infrastructure to be brought up to current speed, you know, at the same time. And, and unfortunately for decades, women have been taught that to be beautiful, they have to primp and preen with chemicals. And it's so deep, especially like it only kind of gets deeper and deeper as we get, you know, if you think about um, magazine images of women in the sixties and seventies, where maybe they weren't even wearing foundation, you know, and it just gets deeper and deeper till we have these, you know, millimeter thick silicone foundations that we're supposed to wear and, you know, not let a gray hair out or, you know what I mean? So the standards are completely unreal. Um, so yeah, of course there's an environmental load. I mean, just think about triclosan and antibacterial soaps or trick, which luckily has been banned, but triclosan still allowed in toothpaste which is crazy. <laughs> what is this so, triclosan you speak of? So this is, um, it's a chemical. It's kind of like an antibiotic, but it's a huge issue uh, as a chemical for aquatic cultures. So water, waterways and water systems. And that's been the main ingredient of antibacterial soaps. And then there's a lot of toothpaste with it. So then we're, you know, and we are like 70% water. So we're kind of our own aquatic little environment. And that's what we've been brushing our teeth with. Not everybody, but, and it's not in every toothpaste, but it's in a lot of the, a lot of the classic ones. So so that's even, that's even more of a push than to, obviously, if you're getting some of the natural ones that are, you know, fluoride free and all this kind of stuff, then they're probably going to be without that, I, I would think. Yeah, but then they've got sodium lauryl sulfate, which is another issue for the waterways as well. Or we, <laughs> oh, <you> damn know, <laughs> it. Or we've gone insane with exfoliating and now like there's bands on the plastic beads, thankfully, but it's such a small like stab at a huge issue. Um, so it's hard. So then we have to like, you know, really re-educate on a deep level to be like, you know, we don't need all those things to be beautiful. And quite frankly, it's probably creating a bit of a catch-22. Because, you know, we're applying the harsh chemicals to get rid of a zit. And meanwhile, that's disrupting the skin's microbiome. And 
you know, and then we're going to create more acne because we've disturbed the whole skin's microbiome. And then we may have to end up going to a dermatologist because we're like, oh, I can't get rid of this acne. And then they give you like a topical cream with antibiotics in it. And then you've got a whole other situation that's, you know, could be causing birth defects or creating like an issue with your gut microbiome because you've been applying antibiotics topically or cortisol. Uh, and it just goes on and on and just the chlorine coming out of our showers in it, you know? So with all of this, yeah, so there is this um, compound effect, this force multiplier. When you when you do one thing wrong, there's this uh, cascade then of all these other <laughs> repercussions. And that, my friends, brings part one with Nadine Artemis to a close. I got some homework for you. You ready? Listen up. First thing I want you to do is reach down on your phone and click subscribe on this podcast so that you don't miss part two with Nadine this Friday, where she really starts dropping the truth bombs. It's like Hiroshima up in this bitch. Boom. Truth, 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 right to the dome. Really good information. Next part of your homework is I'd like you to march yourself into your bathroom right now, open that medicine cabinet and start chucking all that garbage poison stuff in there away. People like Nadine are making it really easy to buy very pure, clean products to put on your skin, on your body, in your body. There's no excuse anymore for this toxic garbage that's bad for the environment, bad for you, and frankly, bad for your offspring should you ever have some. So not to be an alarmist, not to be paranoid, but uh, my job is to inform and educate and inspire people like you. So part one, subscribe. Part two, clean up your personal care products. I'm always working to do this. There's another thing that we didn't talk about in the show, actually, a little tip I can give you, and it's an app called Think Dirty. Now, it's not what you're thinking, not that kind of thinking dirty. It's an app where you can actually scan the barcode of products while you're out shopping, and it gives you a rating on most of them, at least. I mean, if they're really obscure, they won't be in the in the database, but it's pretty cool. It gives you a rating from 1 to 10, 10 being the most toxic, and it's an easy way to kind of vet the different products you're working with. Now, you can also go, as I mentioned earlier, in the mid-roll to lukestory.com forward slash store, where I have a ton of stuff on there. And I haven't added that many things in the personal care department yet, but I'm working on that. So make sure to always check in at my store, because when I find the best stuff, that's where I put it. What else do I want to tell you? Uh, dude, check it out. Could you leave me a rating and a review? I really would really, really appreciate if you can do that. iTunes, the app has made it really easy to do that or in the podcast app rather. So just scroll down on this episode right now and just click on leave a rating and a review. You'll see five little stars there. You want to click on the fifth star just to clear that up and then leave me a brief review and just mention a couple things you like about the show. This is what makes this show grow and it's going to get better and better the higher I get in the iTunes rating. So help me hack the system. Them, show a little love there by giving me a rating and review. And I think that's all I got for you. Um, I will see you Friday here for part two with Nadine. And uh, do yourself a favor and go out and get her book, man. It's absolutely incredible. I'm sure you can get it right now on Amazon. And don't forget, if you go to livinglibations.com and enter the code LIFESTYLIST, you can save 5% off all of the goodies that Nadine offers there. Okay, thanks again for listening. And until we meet again, au revoir, peace out. Best of luck to you. God bless. Have a great day. Bye. Okay, now that we've wrapped up another episode and are even more inspired to live a healthy, happy lifestyle, I want to remind you to go to Organifi.com. That's spelled with an I, Organifi.com. Check out the green juice powder. It's fantastic. And what's even more fantastic is that if you enter the code LIFESTYLIST at checkout, you're going to save a whopping 20% off your order. Go to Organifi.com. Enter the code LIFESTYLIST, save 20%.